Championship. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm here with Noxious and Raven. Guys, how are you doing? That was a Colento versus Life Coach. It was amazing. 3-2, right? Like, uh, it seems like today we're getting a lot of long matches, but for some reason, they don't feel lengthy. Yeah. It's one of the rare cases, I guess, of, uh, of that happening. The metagame is so diverse, and you see so many new cards being added to those decks that suddenly they don't play the same. And Absolutely. It's, it's like your Hearthstone. Yeah. It yeah, does. and seeing the, the amount of players experimenting with cards that literally came out a, day or a couple of days ago now is crazy, because you wouldn't blame anyone for taking like standard pre-new card decks, because it's what they're used to, it's right. what you know works. Yeah. But nearly all of these players have at least put in, put in a Finley into the deck, at least, just to make it a bit more interesting. Finley even so Life good. Coach. Yeah, even Life <laughs> Coach. With the Finley Druids, so that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, the next pair of players that we have prepared for you guys is JJ, Super JJ from Complexity, your teammate Noxious. Right. And we have Boar Control, who is from UK, like you, Raven. Yeah. <laughs> Ni nicely so, done. Oh, we, nicely. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Good work tie in. That was. So we against done. each other now. UK yeah. versus Complexity. Yeah, it's your UK enemies. versus Complexity. I mean, Super JJ is carrying the team at this stage. So, <laughs> you know, if, don't be too rough. Okay. Please be kind. He did win versus RDU 3-0, so he's coming really strong. He, I think he went 3-0 in his two first series. So this wow. is the last one. If he goes 3-0, um, it's going to be... He will be through. Yeah. And, and also as well, Super JJ wasn't one of the invited eight players here. He actually came uh, and was playing in the tournament yesterday to qualify. So he's battled his way through a pretty stacked tournament to get one of the top six spots. Absolutely. And, uh, and now he's you know continuing to perform. So as you said, he's just on fire at the moment. It's insane. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if we see him get very far in this tournament. Yeah, he doesn't have to prove himself. He won no, the Story all. Cup. Yeah. He won the other tournament as yeah, well. Yeah, time to win. And um, then at DreamHack Winter, he was super close. Uh, he. he he made top 16 and then got eliminated at some point. At some point, yeah, during it, I remember that. The, the salty words on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> that then, complexity chat. <laughs> board control? Is he going into board control or more <laughs> aggro? No, it's obviously, uh, you know, it's there for the peddlers. For the no, peddlers. It's just the, the peddlers getting the boards. He, he is playing Warlock. Yeah. Um, but yeah, board control, UK player. Um, and he did quite well at the previous I series. He definitely puts the time into all the online cups. Uh, really good player, similar to, very similar to Ness, actually. Um, good players, but a lot of time into Hearthstone, always performs well, but just quite hasn't had the opportunity to shine in front of an audience and really put his name out there. Because winning all the online cups is fantastic and performing well in those, but to like the greater audience, uh, you know, other than people who actually keep up with the, on the, these online cups, no one will find out who you are. Right? Yeah, so absolutely. He's definitely put himself in a position now that he's, you know, well, he's facing Super JJ, you know, top of his game at the moment, and he gets to face him on stream. And if he can take this win, then he's going to be doing really well for I himself. Was, I was really surprised and happy when uh, I realized he actually made it to the top 16 because I was um, following his progress when he was playing the NVIDIA tournament. And he went into that massive Swiss, and he was always on top. I think he made something like 14 and 1. Yeah. overall and Nvidia. So this is his chance. This is his first televised match and I'm looking forward to it. If he wins versus Super JJ, a lot of people can call it an upset, but for me it will not be that surprising. But let's talk about the lineups, Noxious. There's the one difference only. Yeah, I mean it's the Rogue. Uh, the Rogue and Warlock. I was talking to JJ earlier and apparently his Rogue is kind of the uh, like what he's most proud about, I guess, because he, he thinks right now it's in a very good spot. And uh, he says, I think it's kind of silly maybe not to bring that deck if you know how to play it. Right. Yeah, I if mean, you know how to play I actually it. ran into JJ this morning, so I ended up having breakfast with him yeah. at the hotel. And we were, we were just talking about lineups, and straight away, he's, he just said the same. He was like, Rogue's actually a good pick for the meta at the moment. It, it, it really deals with a lot of the popular classes. And then JJ went, also, you know, Rogue is kind of my thing. Right, so, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so if I can take it, I'm going to take it. So I'm not surprised that he actually went with that decision and picked the Rogue deck. Oh, man. This makes me want to watch some mystery at good playing tournaments, but he is not <laughs> playing in them. Ever. Yeah, apparently. All right, guys, game is ready. <laughs> yeah, it looks like double eviscerate, prep, deadly poison. Now, against a paladin, I would not be surprised if prep was kept exactly. Uh, and is it pretty obvious? Because prep is pretty much a, a card that you keep against everything just because you need that tempo swing. Uh, the rest doesn't impact the board too much. You know, double eviscerate early, what are you going to kill? Yeah. Pretty much nothing. So just making sure that you keep your, uh, your potential combo. Yeah, uh, and on the uh, UK side of the board, We've got uh, the what looks UK to be side of the board. <laughs> 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 oh goodness! <laughs> oh, is this is, where we've come to? This is you did pick complexity yeah. side of the board. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, this looks like could 
this be Reno Paladin? I mean, we saw Sylvanas, boom, Tyrion. Now there's another six drop. I uh, thought, yes. And then Belcher, uh, Argus as well. This could well be Reno Paladin. And ball control taking a debt like this to a tournament this important. I, I think is that fa fair play if that's the case? And this is an absolutely strong assumption because Acolyte of Pain is not common in any other decks. Not I, anymore, no, for sure, no. yeah. It's, uh... No, so, I think this is by far the single most guaranteed Reno Paladin. List. Like, just, just based on the hand, I can't even think of a single deck I'd run this in. Unless it's a, a new deck. Absolutely new deck. Oh, that was. Man. You know, we just got a new wing. Jankadin. We play everything. <laughs> <laughs> One of everything means I've got an answer to anything that can happen. We've seen some wacky decks. Maybe <laughs> it is Elise Star Seeker. Oh, deck. that's true. It's running a lot of bad cards, but then they change the legendary <laughs> cards. <laughs> Which are also bad, unless you get another Elise to then retransform those. <laughs> go, go again. Go again. Oh, uh, going full circle. I don't like these monkeys. But the oh, thing man. is, if you're ever going to put Elise in a deck, then it's going to be a deck like a Reno deck that goes long games and will yeah. actually you will eventually draw into the cards you I, need. I'm not even against the idea of playing it in a Reno deck. I think it's funny enough to include. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, how consistent would Reno be if you ever got to it and it ended up not working out? Like, if you got to the Legendaries and somehow your Reno's not active, like activatable anymore. Or you didn't draw him, so maybe yeah, there's none in the deck. If the, what? what? After playing at least you can still get Reno. Multiple well, copies. <laughs> <laughs> Gang up that Reno. New metagame. Oh, no. Oh, uh, okay. So, oh, so back so to sick. slightly more serious talk. This is going to be a good board play. This is going to be disgusting. Prep fan of knives into coin Edwin. Yeah. By the way, guys, so we talked about this matchup overall. Rogue is very good versus Paladin. How good it is versus the Reno deck? Worse, I'd say. You think it's worse? I'd say it's because worse because of the fact that if you don't get that... If you get damage in and it gets negated in one, one fell swoop, then suddenly you're really far behind. <laughs> you have to go through another 30. Look at Ball Control's face. He's like, Edwin, whoa. Fan of nice whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. Rogue is JJ's thing. Um, so it's not exactly out of it yet. He yeah, um, definitely has some options here. Would you just say just pass the Belcher and then kill the 1-1 one -one now just to slow, slow the Van Cleef down a little bit? The, the problem with the Belcher is it doesn't really weaken Edwin that much. Do you think he needs to go for Lothab then? That's the, that's the what I'm, yeah. I'm kind of trying to think about. Because if you go Lothab, then you, f let's say, follow it up with, you know, Hero Power, Cog Hammer, finish off Edwin. You take damage in the process, granted. And plus Lothab can't be sapped. Right. Well, and then so. you go for Dr. Boom on 7, which if sap falls, you don't really care because you just get another... You just play it again. Right, you replay it. So, you can play Dr. Boom twice in one game. So good. It's good. It's good that he's actually taking his time because this is his first televised match. And this is stressful, just sitting there with the audience watching you and uh, specifically in that seat. But he took his time and he made a decision, which uh, I don't know if it's correct, but it's actually interesting, right? Yeah. I because think something that will help him is because he just grinds out the online qualifiers and the cups, then although it's com it is different being at a live event, and obviously playing against someone like JJ, but He's also had to play a million games of like important tournament matches. So at least that side of it, he'll probably have uh, under control. Yeah, versus JJ, where, where you can just feel the salt <laughs> coming at you. Yeah. As I'm I, I, if I was God. playing JJ, I would not want to sit too close. Because if like he gets angry, you just never know. They might see a monitor fly over. Well, I mean, the Super JJ is at least going to throw a pirate into what I assume is going to be Lothab. Because what this does is it safeguards Edwin, and suddenly you don't have to lose health on it. Yeah. And it's not going to be vulnerable to any type of board clear. And now he's questioning, do I need my dagger next turn, or can I safely go for the heal? How much is a dagger worth? In this case, not so much. Yeah, I think it's fine. And um, what you can also consider is maybe keeping Farseer to be able to heal Edwin. But then he really wants to play Azuchek next turn anyway. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately for ball control, I will be surprised if we even see Kalfagrad drop onto the board. Uh, at this I mean, point. it might be a little bit slow. It is a good, uh, it is a good drop. Not so much against Rogues, uh, unless you've already, you know, gotten sapped 70 times, and then suddenly the the Kalfagrad can do his thing. But it's a card you can use in this exact situation if you have a Delta lingers or even the Boombots yeah. coming back alive. Yeah. It's something ridiculous, but the Boombots against the Rogue are really dangerous. Yeah. Like, they, they really don't want to pop those, so... You would probably just, um, slam the Skyroll and 
Yeah, yeah, I think you have to challenge the Van Cleef, right? Because, again, Belcher doesn't do enough. It just dies to what's on board. And what's on board is still going strong, so... He, he seems to be anguishing about playing this. He's like, I'm gonna get sapped, I'm gonna get sapped. Or he's I'm just gonna, gonna die. It, it is the just best. Or getting, yeah, getting yeah, killed. All, yeah, or losing the game. Well, that's one way to start. Does, is this six? Mm. Is, it, is it worth killing, though? Well, I mean, when you've got prep of this raid, you can yeah. at least consider it. It's so much damage as well. Oh. Like, if you just go ninth face here... He could float yeah. if he really wants to. I don't mind going just full face and passing. Well, he could go face with the deadly point. No, you can't dagger up. Oh, he's not gonna yeah. dagger, sorry, yeah. I like it. Just not using the tools, because if you kill it, you can get something worse. Like, you can get a word elemental. But look at this. The Aldor into the trade, into the defender, gives boar control a pretty good way to stop some of the incoming aggression. Blade He's Flurry actually will getting board control! Damn. <laughs> I was waiting for this one. He's not playing Hunter though, so we're not going to see a Huffer. So we need a Piloted Shredder. Um, I can, what, do we, what do we want out of the... What about... Do you, do you really go Aldor? You can also go Cockhammer and just get a free kill right there. And then you Aldor the Drake. I, I would yeah. at least Aldor the Drake. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm not... You just want to reduce it down and also... You kind of want to play what you can this turn because he can KT next turn. You might actually trade away his board and then regain all the minions back again. Plus, you didn't see Sap. How good must that feel? Yeah. I actually wouldn't ha doing it uh, the other way around. Just killing the Azure Drake and then Aldoing Edwin. Oh, Noxus. I'm what, sorry. What about I'm Sap? sorry I ever said anything or control. Biased, biased cast. Happy feast! <laughs> <of Winterfell. laughs> oh no, and they said it was a nice emote. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Is it worse than just saying hello? It is worse. <laughs> yeah, it's the yeah, worst yeah, thing. Yeah, it's definitely worse. Because it's the worst BM you could have. Like, it just feels. Because they said it with such a smile. It feels like everybody became Jaina when she says thank you. Like, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. Yeah. Smug. smells like her. <laughs> Super smug. It's like stealing a lollip lollipop from a child and saying, Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> it's like, what? That's <laughs> exactly. What it's, and you know what? I have to wonder. At the office at Blizzard, did they think it was gonna sound nice to us? <laughs> because honestly, all I'm doing these days is spam that thing. I didn't use to spam that many emotes, but now I've gone, you know, I've acquired the taste, and I wonder, and I'm scared that I may keep doing it after. <laughs> I just love it. It won't emotes. be as good afterwards, though. Once it's gone, it won't be as good. I wonder how they will do it for the future events, because what what, what other events are there? Like Noble Garden, Love is in the Air. I like love is in the air. Like, I love, love you, and you scratch them in the face. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, it's like Rexar saying, somewhere deep down, I still love you, and he just punches <laughs> you with a bow. <laughs> that's, oh. a, that's a good love story. Still better love story than Twilight. Absolutely. I can't complain. All right, guys, the second game is uh, that rogue again versus Druid. Yeah. Uh, usually, you would say Super JJ's hand is pretty bad, but the thing that's interesting is the fact that. The prep being already there means that any minion he picks up, he can probably secure by using spells. So it's not the most amazing hand, but Rogue doesn't expect to start with something optimal very often. I think he needs uh, more draw here, something like Azure Drake later. The thing is, he really wants a backstab, or a yeah, backstab is the best, because if Aspirant falls down, you don't have the answer, then it's really difficult. Uh, actually, Violet yeah. Teacher would be really good. Yeah. Speaking of Violet Teacher on 4 and then doing the preparation shenanigans. Yeah, from board control side, how much do you actually like coin out the uh, Aspirant? Because you don't have anything to follow up with. Uh, the, the UK side of things. Well, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's see what's happening there. Well, we're on home ground here, okay. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you coin the uh, Aspirant, what I happens? I don't think it does very much. And no. that, that's kind of why like the threat of backstab may be sufficient to deter you from playing it. But the fact that Super JJ doesn't have it means that if it were played and there was a follow-up, the rogue would race ahead, like, would just yep. race ahead. Now JJ it's, is relieved, I, yeah, can, I can tell. That's a good card. He will be able to draw stuff and he, he is contesting things as well. Now you... This is awkward, do right? You, do you actually wrath for one here because you need to draw something else to play? I think turn? you might do it. It never feels great because you really want the wrath to kill off like the SI7 agents or help with the drakes. But, but you have two of them. Yeah, exactly. Because you've got two and you kind of just need to draw into something. Because now you, you, yeah, you're super You're playing into it. deadly poison. Yeah. But then you do limit the uh, mana, but no, not really. 
Yeah, deadly poison is just stealing this easily. I mean, as long as you have two wraths and one swipe, you're gonna get to turn seven for boom. And if you get to turn seven for boom versus rogue, you can, make, yeah. you can probably yeah. just do something. <laughs> exactly, punish them severely. So that alone is probably why board control was okay with just throwing the aspirant and keep the coin maybe for that uh, turn six boom. Yep. Yeah, um, now it looks like the wraths are almost certainly gonna come down. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, he, he's roughing first. See what's happening. He needs cards. Like he needs something like Pilot of Shredder. Druid of a Claw. He needs to fill his curve. Oh goodness. And that's not a great card for Bow Control, but a good card for JJ. Love up is actually. It's not the worst actually for Bow Control. The fact that he's got combo already means that he can start playing with that knowledge. Uh, but he still doesn't have turn four, turn five. He has turned six with the coin. But that's what I'm saying. Like, he's playing, just based on so his if hand, he gets he's a boom playing... Then follow right. up with combo. That's exactly it. Like, right now, his hand is pretty good just because he's guaranteed to get that combo and he's guaranteed to get boom early. Yeah. So but even though he hasn't been able to put pressure, that should be more than... Yeah, so, so now... Wrath Asp awesome, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wrath Aspirin is nice. Um, just because, yes, it'll die to the weapon, but then there's the weapon gone. Deadly Poison's gone. So that's going to be pretty okay. Yeah. And then he can still come in Thorison. Yeah. For the extra mana crystal, and then Thorison reduces everything down. So that Dr. So you're Volk actually still getting six. the benefit, yeah. Oh, wait. That does change things for JJ. Does it? Do you not just use the weapon anyway? I don't know, with the flurry, it's... It's just because backstab's really good at, um, the backstab's good combo piece. Yeah, And I understand right. it, it looks have nice, but... Yeah, for sure. And you'd rather flurry with a, like, much bigger board. Yeah. And, and the druid's not going to drop, like, three minions this turn that you want to flurry. That's the hope. Well, what druid is <laughs> dropping is the Torison. Triple innovate. And he has all the great cards, because the combo is being reduced. Swipe reduced, Dr. And Show Bonfassi. Floor. And Show oh Floor as well. God. Yeah. Lore Control is in a great spot with this. Like, the, the, the cards that this Emperor hits are all the cards that you want yeah. an Emperor to hit. Yep. But and on it, the other hand, you are losing tempo. And if there's something like Eviscerate for Super JJ, that Thorison just dies and he continues attacking with the minions. Yeah, yeah. The, the good thing is, though, even though Super JJ's uh, seemed quite dominant in the match so far, he's done, like, no damage to the Druid. So it's not like this Drake is actually threatening, you know, like pushing him even further for potential lethal next turn. He's probably feeling pretty okay. And the Rogue does have to deal with Thoris in this turn. And he said he can follow up with Boom and then into whatever the hell he wants afterwards. If you oh look really close, Raven, goodness. you can you can see that there is one damage actually being done. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Virtually no damage. But this is scary because if you go for Lothab Prep Eviscerate... I called it again, by the way. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're getting... You, you could technically get like one of the most amazing oils, if you wanted. Yeah, I think oil is fine here, even though there was. Uh... Uh, he's just gonna go for the cycle plus Lotha, which is also. Yep. Uh, it's actually even better, just because you keep the burst from Eviscerate for the yeah. face. So. And Final Knives isn't gonna do much more than that in this matchup, right? There's not often that you're gonna be able to clear a big board versus mid range. Yeah, and the sap, also somewhat helpful. Can he go for Doctor Boom, or is it too dangerous? I think it might be the, the last moment where I, you have the chance to I go. think you might just have to play Boom. If you don't play it now, you're probably not playing it. Ever. And yeah. it, and the Booms, it's strong enough to swing the game back. Uh, it's looking really rough now, but those Boom bots, as we saw in the previous game of Flash, Life Cops versus Clento, can sometimes just kill Yeah, them especially with the Swipe, right? If they weaken them just yeah, enough yeah. that Swipe can clean them up, then that, you're good. And the thing is as well, if he ignores them, he has combo. So Sap is... Uh, probably a necessity, but it's a bit awkward. You will not be able to sap, weapon up, and oil. Yeah. The most you can do is sap now, prepare your dagger up, or just... Uh, yeah, you have to prepare the dagger up and hope that you find something to play afterwards. So what are these boom bosses? You, you have to flurry those? That's, I don't think so. Nope, he's oh, not. So Here we go, pushing for it. Yeah, five to face. So how good's combo now? Uh, it's not that great. Like if you come, because do you need to do it though to guarantee the minions die? Well, you have seven mana. You can swipe, right? Combo is like twenty. With combo, and then you can follow it with law or boom, or even the druid of the claw charge. Because the boom bots might hit really big. That, right? That's a that's a great point. Well, with combo, you 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 feel like you're not dying. 
yeah, with combo you feel safe, you clear the board, the boom bots might do crazy things, uh, and you have Druid of the Claw to follow up with. So, and the rogues doesn't play taunts. So, I don't know, I think that's the best way to get Guar back into the game. It, yeah. Or, or, you'll, or you'll and you lose. I mean, swipe point. is kind of all right. Like, if you just swipe Lothab and then you play BGH from Tempo, you can usually get all that stuff to kind of stick on the board, but the problem is the safety is not guaranteed because yeah. the bots do have to hit. Yeah. Uh, I, I like this because it's much more manageable. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably the best. Boombots. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, it's a bit extra to overkill, but why not? Like, that's, that's pretty okay. Yeah, now 12 damage. Uh, Super JJ is going to be wondering did he get double combo with that Thorson? Is Deadly Poison lethal? Deadly Poison would be lethal. This is not enough. SI, oil, go face, and then sprint. You just have to. Oil. Do you just, just oil first? Oil SI? Uh, well, you've seen Wrath, right? You've seen two Wraths. Yeah, the thing is, like, you deal two more damage. But the SI will do more the following turn. If it lives, but you're forcing yeah. him to play off curve, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. A tiny yeah. bit. If he has the Wrath, you've already seen the Wrath. You've so seen two Wraths, so you need Swipe or Keeper. Yeah. Or Lethal. <laughs> or that. Yeah. Okay, so now Ancient of Law heal and swipe feels pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. You're you don't have the branch. mana though, how do you do that? Oh, he's one off. Sorry, you I thought he was on nine mana. Yeah. Oh, okay, he's just one off. And now an Eviscerate would do it, and he's got one left in the deck. Deadly Poison would do it as well, actually. Oh, so he can just basically... Oh! 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 <laughs> that buys him time. That buys him. He's got a yeah. stop. And yeah. then he pretty much uh, is able to just go in with the South Sea. South Sea Deadly Flurry. Yeah, exactly. Do you, because do you, you have to use your weapon now, don't you? Uh, you, you don't have to. Because yeah. if Druid of the Claw comes back, you can just Deadly and Flurry and deal, like, kill Druid of the Claw, oh, deal man. six to face. And re, re weapon. And you up. win, yeah. But the, the thing is, the Ancient of Lore, will it be played for heal? Because it's much better than Druid of the Claw. Yeah. No matter how you look at this. And does that prevent you? With so we're talking Probably. six, flurry. And he's going to arm up as well. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. But it does wipe the board. Yeah, you still clear the board and you And you can play even more minions after that. Well, so. with Violet Teacher. Yeah. I'd even consider Drake, honestly. I think it's a bit better even. If you find Prep, then you can go for Violet. If you find a Visitor, oh, you just win, right? Yeah, that's it, I think. It's five damage, yeah. One, six two, and oh. Pirate, yeah, absolutely. That's even more. Yep. yep. Overkill. So JJ is winning another game for Exact. Oh. Well, he's not exactly though, right? Um, oh, no, with the South Sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah one South Sea is overkill. Please tell me you attacked in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought you missed it. There yeah. we go. The Rogue again for JJ doing a lot of work. Um, so what's interesting is that I think based on what RDU told me, and he's the same group as these guys, RDU went 0-2 to start with. Yeah. I think he's 1-2 at the end. Unless, uh, he I, won I, versus board control, right. and he is 1-2. If, and if AKA J Wonder loses versus um, board control, and if JJ wins, wins versus board control, then we have control, a three-way tie. Then we have a three-way tie, but it's got to come down to exactly this. And if JJ wins this, then RDU just might. Be able <laughs> to make it. He was, Somehow. He's got like the Somehow. one chance to make it, and this is it. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and also, like, this is why different formats are interesting in the game because JJ, who's like a super rogue player, can actually sit on rogue if he can win and just use that leverage to his advantage being a specialist. Yeah. And it's like it's something we don't see in Conquest, of course, where if you win with a deck, you win with it once and that's it. Whereas Last Hero Standing, he can just show off how good he is at rogue. And Absolutely. it's really cool to see that as well. And he is in a great position with that rogue right now. But uh, the hand from board control is decent. Oh. I mean, you could tap on three and use the one drop from Peddler. Yeah, so this looks like Reno luck. Yeah, I think he's trying to fetch that Reno ASAP, but does this really accelerate it at all? Maybe he tries to make the Drake as big as possible. This can still be Malilok. A what, sorry? Uh, yeah, Ma Malilok with Malagos. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's Malagos. You're on form today with guessing those next cards. You're right, it is. Well, I, I guess, guess the I whole deck. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Well, you know, we learned at DreamHack that everybody had Malilok in their lineup. Right? Yeah. But they just decided not to bring it. Only Purple did. And that seemed to go well for him. That's that's actually true. Yeah. Everybody had Everybody uh, Everybody said they had it. And decided at the last moment, well, I'd probably bring Paladin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody made the same call. Well, board control brings the Malilok. And what does it mean? Malilok versus Rogue. I vote for Rogue. 
biased uh, biased again. From yeah. Us, so, uh, I think Mali Lock's better. I think Mali Lock overall, the only edge it has is the healing that's in it. But that's common to all Warlocks that play a somewhat slow slow style. It's not so much Mali Lock as much as it is Warlock decks. I, I think that. it's um, it's an okay matchup. It really depends on the draws at the moment. But uh, if you get the Guardians, if you get Belchers, if you get uh, Blackwing Corruptors, you can actually pack a lot of pressure in the early game. And then Rogue will not be able to kill you. We'll have to deal with the minions. Yeah. And at some point, you do have the Malagos combo. And as you mentioned, heals. Like, Brown Bronze Beard plus heal bot. Yeah. It's a ridiculous way to just stop a Rogue. Yeah. yeah. And the thing as well is the Malilok has really good AoE options because a lot of their minions are quite high attack, so the Shadow Flames are really powerful. And it's just consistently clearing the uh, the minions off the board. Unlike when we saw the Druid game previously, where the Druid struggled. When there was the Lothab and the uh, the Azure Drake down, right. it required for you know it re required combo to guarantee the kill. Whereas uh, you know Maligos with uh, the Dark Bombs, even Soul Fires if needed to actually just remove the minions. Because I think the longer the game goes on, that the more advantage goes to the Malilot because the Rogue just runs out of damage. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other hand, preparation sprint was huge for Super yeah. JJ. Right now, he has all the options he wants. So he will have really strong turns. But this Belcher, like, let's talk about the Belcher in that Rogue deck from JJ. Because it's not something you see in most Rogue decks. Uh, oil lists don't all run it. Yes, of recent memory, it's kind of come back. But you still see the occasional deck where just there's no Belcher. And those tend to be the ones that you see the most for some reason in tournament play. So seeing the Belcher here really makes... Uh, oh. Oh. A stop hey, this is really nice. I was going to say, the Mortal Coil for two is going to be awesome. Yeah, but he's he's doing what JJ wants, which is put stuff on the board so I can flurry. Yeah. And I hope that Board Control realizes it. Well, Board Control has the follow-up with the Sludge Belcher from himself. Yeah, I think one of the issues is with Malilock, I don't think you can afford not to. Oh, extend, be, yeah. Yeah, be, because like it's not like Handlock, where you have a Mountain Giant on, and you're like, kill this Mountain Giant. Right now, kill this big minion. Now, kill this. The minions are very mid-range. Like, they're beefy and can do a lot of damage, but not just one by one, because yeah. the, the health is low enough, as we can see, with like the ma maximum five health on the Twilight Drake there. Uh, the, the health is low enough to just easily deal with on the Rogue on a single basis or an AoE basis. So. I think the Mali Lot's just got to play a bit of beatdown at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. We mostly play the beatdown, and uh, he has ways to replenish the board if it's being cleared. So he's fine seeing one or two board clears, because in the end he will be playing those minions. Yeah. So as, uh, like he's got the option here of going for the double SI, you know, killing two minions with this. Or now that the Edwin showed up, he's probably thinking, is that worth it? You know, make it a six-six. Don't make it too big. Yeah. The bigger is. In this a, case. And a lot of Mali Lock run well, double BGA. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, you definitely don't want to try that. And now he can kill the Drake. He's going to take only four. So he's still in a good spot. As long as he can dodge very specific cards coming from the Maligos Warlock. And Edwin has to be dealt with in some way. There is no silence for board control at the moment. This deck mostly plays one. I, I, I've seen people cut it to, to just play one owl. So what can you do here? If you want to be super aggressive, but the problem is you don't have that much burst. War Control is only having this one Soul Fire, Malagos, but no Torison, so no combo for now. He will have that uh, Soul Fire on turn 10, but turn 10 is far away. So for now, he still has to play the board control game. Very good, Nim. I expect nothing less. <laughs> expect he, nothing all less. that talk it led to that one <laughs> last. Streak of words. So he's gonna try to check for a soul fire. Oh, he picks one up. Yeah, the options were corruption, power overwhelming, and soul fire for you guys uh, watching the stream. Yeah, Pio is, Pio is pretty good because now he has more burst. So he might be thinking about swinging. I makes pedalist so good. of Argus face, or do you implosion and try to trade? He, he might full clear here if you want. But... Oh, that hurts. Well, it's not perfect, but he at least can draw a card of coil. Yeah, but how afraid are you of Blade Flurry now? You've seen... You actually had a good board that can die to Blade Flurry, and and it didn't. Yeah. There was uh, just fun of knives. And the thing is as well, although it's, it would be unfortunate if the Blade Flurry came down now and cleared the board, it's not the most high-value board. There are no weapon either. buffs, guys, there's right? Like, there's not too much going no, there's on. Not, there's none right now, but I mean, Drake Flurry on its own cleans up most of this. So I would at least... Well, especially because he has two of them, right? Yeah, he doesn't need it that much. And with Lothab, he might be able to secure a turn where suddenly pushing for lethal is just in the range of possibility. Yeah, I think the Drake Fury is actually not bad. But then, what do you really achieve for that? You just kill a couple... Wait, what about Flurry? 
Uh, no, that makes no sense. If you flurry first, then you go for the uh, eviscerate. Well, there we go. Never mind. He's doing it. <laughs> you just if, watch it. If, if you do this, <laughs> never it's mind. In play. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Never mind. That is, it kind of played itself. I yeah, guess. that's that's good call. Good call. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh. Well, you notice this the same play as JJ at the same time, mostly. Yeah, but I'm not the one in the tournament. <laughs> you know, when I have perfect information, it's easier to make those calls. And I'm also not on the clock. Um, and you're not that salty. <laughs> oh, no, actually. Well, you, you would salty. be surprised. <laughs> you are a salty person, yeah. He watched my stream once, and he said, you're the only person I've ever seen who matches me in salt. <laughs> so I guess at some... That is a compliment. Deep from down level. Man. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so the Corruptor came down then to kill off the 3-3, which it does look good for ball control, but this Van Cleef is still untouched. It's just getting so much work done. This low sub is really scary. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Again, the, a really good tempo play. Just lock the spells, sap the minion, slam face, and JJ is positioning himself perfectly here. Blackwing Corruptor and Defend of Argus do kill the Edwin, though. Oh man, it's like it's so awkward with would, nine would mana. You, would you Blackwing Corruptor run the Imp Gang Boss into the uh, Blackwing Corruptor Lothab run the Imp Gang Boss in and then Defender of Argus? No, you have you to have Defender to. first. Otherwise, you can't kill the Edwin unless you want to kill Lothab. No, no, yeah, that's what I mean. Sure, sure, yeah, my bad. Kill Lothab and put the two, absolutely uh, yeah. two, a two-two up, and uh, and the Corruptor is taunted. It might be because the one damage difference isn't going to change, change anything much, too much, right? The extra taunt, however, might. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're, you're right. And then he has actually played some turn 10. Yeah, but JJ also has a Deadly Poison opportunity soon. Well, doesn't this is, pick it up. is this just over? It's two damage with Azu Drake with the Fairy. Right, yeah, he just Drake backstab Flurry. Backstab. And how much damage he has left. Like he has to weapon up. Break, Flurry, that wipes. That's two damage to the Leaves face, two, that's one eight. Up. Yeah, so he's still alive, actually. I don't think he's got... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he's gotten, like... Uh, oh. Does, kill just yet. does ball control need to d draw Bran now, realistically? Uh, Double heal ball oh, will do it. Yeah, okay. Double heal you can, you can do the other way of healing for 16. But if you do that, then you don't taunt, so you still take another 10 from the board itself. So do you really gain that much? You've yeah. seen two flurries, one Phantom Knives, so you know there's no more area. Oh. Please, your three threes will be tools for yeah. trading. He can, yeah, he can heal ball, uh, soul fire power overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And clay. Mm -hmm. It good. cleans up the entire board. And now JJ has to deal 11 with nothing. Well, he has. Was, but if oh, he, he has so far, if yeah. He doesn't throw the second heal bar. He could actually claw his way back into this. What do you even want to this card, Belcher? Uh, oh, that's uh, rough. What was I saying? Yeah, he that's rough. Throw? And now, now I think JJ is just pretty happy to see that. I'm surprised he played the Chow, actually. Wouldn't you rather just throw away the Chow? I understand having the multiple minions for ball control. Probably just uh, Soulfire first. <laughs> yeah, just to have a chance to throw the Chow away, because you'd rather throw the Chow than the heal bot, right? I, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, that was sense. a confusing statement. <laughs> yeah. You all know what I meant. Look, it's okay when Nymph does it, when I do it. It doesn't work. No, it's just that I attended this amazing UK event, and all I have to show for it are dank memes. <laughs> I'll get over it though. Oh man. All right. The sprint is uh, pretty nice as well because oh. he's uh, nowhere near dying and he will be able to replenish his hand. And now for board control, this is the moment where he can try to take this game back. It's going to take quite a bit though. He gets a soul fire and he gets he it. He gets a soul fire. Unbelievable. Or abusive is, is abusive better? With BGH? It doesn't kill anything though. No, I mean, abusive on the zombie child, trade for 4 4 four, and then just run the 3 That's three better, away. actually, by a long shot. And he can still squeeze the belt train as well. So he's just, just holding on. But what does he actually need to win? I mean, another sap. Does, does JJ have another sap left? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, I don't know if he plays two though. Like, he, he played one for sure. Yeah, I think we've, we've only ever seen one sap one, per yeah. game, right? There it is. Yeah, there oh. is a so sap. he wins next turn, basically, right? With, uh, yeah. Because he can sap and then he can play deckhands and just buffs. Yeah, I mean, Phantom Knives now to cycle, see what you got. Yeah, and is there no more healing left for ball control? Oh, Maybe an Earthering Farseer? One, but even then, yeah. is that enough? Sap, South Sea, Deadly, Oil. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a lot yeah. of burst. A lot of there burst. There shouldn't be more. Low Theb? Have we seen uh, Low Theb on ball control? Uh, it is possible. And it is not, not Low Theb. <laughs> 
It is noticeably not low though. Well, that escalated quickly. It yeah. seems like it's a free out with Rogue from Super JJ. And RD right now is dancing, a <laughs> merry dance. Yeah. Unless he lost versus, uh, unless AK Wonder ended up uh, winning versus winning War control. control. Yeah. I have not asked, but. All right. So Super JJ a convincing free zero with Rogue, which means that he is absolutely going through with three wins in the group. Yeah, and, and looking at just looking at the lineups very quickly again, War Control's lineup does get wrecked by Rogue. Yeah, and that's and something that maybe some players have like missed because Rogue's kind of been out of the meta game for such a long time. Uh, and you can't build a last hero standing lineup that's good against everything. So you have to try and pick like the class or two. We saw similar to Dreamhack. People actually said they built lineups uh, without thinking about Priest because no one should really be playing it that much. Right. And then the players who brought Priest got really far. I think AK Wonder and Zetalot got in top 16 or top eight. Um, with Priest decks, and they were just 3 0 with it because everyone's lineups were pretty weak. So yeah. I mean, JJ went 9 0 total in his group. Three yeah. wins, 3 3 0s. Was it 9 0, like fully? The entire. He didn't lose a single game. He won versus RDO 3 0 with Druid. He won 3 0 versus Board Control with Rogue. And what was the first AK Wonder. 3 0 versus AK Wonder. I think so. That's what I. That's what I, I was told he went 3 0 against everyone. Let's make it the truth. Like, even if it was a 3 2, it was 3 0 <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. In my heart, there was yeah. a Rogue. <laughs> Absolutely, 9 0. <laughs> Uh, 6 0 is actually free as well. 6 0 1 and uh, 6 0 has 3 0 score overall, so he is advancing to tomorrow as well, I believe. So, pretty good tur tournament so far. Yeah, and Sonya really Trusova Championship. Got nothing to say, it's good. I've loved the matches. I, I can't, I'm kind of sad that we haven't seen the, the Tomb Pillager from JJ. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, playing Vulture instead. And yeah, exactly. He's playing more defensive cards. Uh, maybe the second sap. I'm not sure what he removed or what people remove typically. Usually it's shredders, but we didn't see shredders. So it's got to be more of the minion. Uh, we see two Farseers, I think, though, in his deck. Yeah, so he so, has a different build. Right, exactly. A bit more healing uh, than Stability other people. Stability with like Vulture and Farseers. Yeah, it makes sense. And it, and it works because he is winning versus those, those players. And he is an excellent rogue player himself. He is uh, streaming a lot of rogue yeah. as well. All right, guys, that was a pretty quick and a pretty fun match. Uh, for you guys, we have a lot more matches coming. I, th I think we have two or three more matches, actually. Yeah. Three more. Uh, oh, no, maybe two more. Maybe maybe actually two more. And um, we'll update you as well what's, uh, what are the standings, who is through, who is not through. So don't worry about it. We will have all the information when we come back after a short break. So stay tuned for more Hearthstone.